let's add some cool full armor effect to our game. Let's see what that means. Alright, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and in this tutorial we're going to add a custom full armor effect to our game. So what does that mean? It means that if you are wearing a full armor set of a particular mod armor material, then you're going to get an effect basically, a potion effect. This actually has been suggested a couple of times before and I've made a custom class for that which basically, well, checks whether or not you're wearing the full suit of armor and then applies the effect to the player. For that we have to actually add a new item here. So in our custom package, new mod armor item and this will of course extend the armor item class there you go and then we'll simply hover over this create constructor matching super then i will simply copy over a few things so the class is of course available in the description below either in the github repository or as a gist where you can simply copy over stuff the first thing we want to copy over is basically at the top of the material to effect map this is a map that basically maps a particular armor material to a particular status effect. So in this case, we're saying that if you have Ruby on, then you will get invisibility. We put in multiple ones. So for example, you might want to add multiple different armor materials and have them have different effects. That's totally fine. You can chain those put calls basically infinitely as you want. So for example, if I had another one here, I would then call, for example, you know, something like, I don't know, Cobalt or something like that. I could choose a different effect here. So you can simply, you know, put as many things in here as you want. Just make sure that you end with the data builder there. That's all that you really need to keep in mind. There are two limitations on this class because this is basically a custom class that I came up with. So this is basically a completely original design. The thing about the status effect that's that you can't control individually what level the actual status effect will be. So if you change the status effect, it's going to change for all possible status effects. So if you have, you know, three or four different armor materials and three or four different status effects, then the level would change for all of them. That's number one. And number two, the duration of the status effect can also only be changed for all of them at the same time. That doesn't make that much of a difference because in theory, the status effect is going to be applied for as long as you're wearing the armor. So it's going to be reapplied anyway. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Right, so let's actually, if you have the gist open, for example, let's copy over the two bottom methods, the has full suit of armor on and the has correct armor on methods. So let's take a look at the those. So the names of the methods should actually already lead to you to understand what they actually do. So this one simply says, okay, does this player that we're passing in here have the material on that we're passing in here? So we first get all four items. We first get all four armor items, pretty straightforward. And then we're simply checking whether or not the material of that item that the actual player wears is the same material that is passed in here in this method. The has full suit of armor on simply checks whether or not the player is actually wearing a full suit of armor. So whether or not all four armor slots of the player's inventory are actually filled. So both of those actually fairly straightforward. The next thing we want to add is the add status effect for material method. That is a bit more complicated, but also not too bad. First thing we're going to do is basically, we're going to basically make a boolean of the has player effect. This basically checks whether or not the player has the status effect that is about to be applied here. And if that's not the case, and the player has the correct armor on, then the actual status effect is added to the player with like here a duration of 10 seconds. Like I said, this can only be changed for all status effects entirely. Just keep that in mind. And then every 10 seconds, this is reapplied because then of course the has player effect in that case is false, which makes this negation here true and therefore coming in here again. Now in here, I have added something where you basically have a 40% chance of damaging the armor while wearing it uh, for basically one amount. Now this is optional. You can also in theory just delete that or you could make this configurable, for example, via a config file, which is something we're going to take a look at in a future tutorial. That is something that you can do, but you don't have to necessarily. This is just something I added. So every time that the status effect is applied again, you get a 40% chance. In this case, you can of course also change the chance right here. That is basically something that you can do as well. Right, and then there is another method, which is the evaluate armor effects method. That one basically, as you can see, gets goes through the material to effect map that we have defined right here. And it's going to get, first of all, the armor effect and then the status effect. And then it's going to say, okay, does the player have the correct armor on? And if that is the case, then we're going to add a status effect here. So in theory, we don't actually really have to check this here and here. It just makes sense. Why not check it twice? That's it's not the worst thing ever. But if the so if the player actually has the correct armor on, then we're going to pass that into the add status effect for material method. 
and the actual status will be applied if it can be applied. Now the big question is where is this evaluate armor effects method called? Well this is called in the inventory tick method. That is a method that we actually can override here as you can see. So this is something if I middle mouse button click on this and uh, you can see that oh let me middle mouse button click on this. This is actually a method of the actual item class, as you can see. So this is something that, that comes from Minecraft itself. This is called every tick for this particular item, if this is in the inventory of the player. So first of all, we're gonna make sure that we are on the server here. Then we're gonna make sure that the entity that actually, you know, where this ticks actually is the player. Because for example, the inventory tick would also tick for, for example, a donkey or something like that, where they might be able to actually have something in the inventory as well. Then we're gonna cast this entity to the player and then say, hey, does the player have a full suit of armor on? If that is the case, then we're gonna evaluate the effect. So we were basically checking, hey, does the player even have a full sort of armor on because if the player doesn't then we don't even need to evaluate anything of course this only works with a full suit of armor right so that is basically the custom class here and what you need to do is if you go into the mod items class you can change one of your you can change one of the four armor items to this so let's take the helmet i prefer the helmet mod armor item and that's it so for each basically material you only want to change one to the armor item and not all four i highly recommend not doing that because changing one is going to be totally enough so please keep that in mind when you use this and that is actually all that we really need to do so now we can go in game and see if it works all right we found us back in minecraft and as you can see i already have the invisibility effect applied to me and there it is it's going to be applied to me again because of course i'm wearing the full suit of armor and all of them are ruby if i for example take out the ruby boots then you will see that the invisibility effect is not renewed and if i take and if I put on the boots again, then as you can see, the invisibility effect is applied once more. So that's actually how easy it can be. And if we take another look at the mod armor class, what I can say is that if you didn't like fully follow everything that is happening here, that is once again something where Java knowledge is incredibly important because anyone who understands Java should be able to follow this fairly straightforwardly because nothing in here is too complicated, to be honest, really. Like it's, it's actually not too bad. That's why I always keep going on about, you know, having a solid foundation of Java. And if you don't have that, maybe consider actually, you know, taking a look at a course or any tutorial series on YouTube. Sadly, I don't have one just yet, but I am planning on something. So don't worry, this is going to come at some point. But for the time being, you of course have access to that class via either the GitHub repository or the gist. And that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I would of course appreciate a like if you did, and I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah, 